In this video, I'm going to show you three things that the Jehovah's Witnesses get wrong about Jesus and why they're so far off about Jesus that they are not a Christian group. Hi, my name is David Cipriano. I'm a youth pastor and my goal is to teach the Bible to as many people as possible. The Jehovah's Witnesses are a denomination that claims to be Christian. They say that they believe in Jesus and that faith in him is essential for salvation. But they hold so many false teachings about the Bible and about Jesus that I believe that they are not a Christian group. Now, I'm not trying to say that you have to be right about everything to be a Christian, because if that was true, then no church and not even any person could be one. But when groups like the Jehovah's Witnesses teach so many unbiblical things, especially around the essentials of the faith, then it's no longer accurate to call them Christians. And when I say that they aren't Christians, I'm not trying to make the claim that there are absolutely no saved people in the Jehovah's Witness church. But in general, and as a majority, I don't believe that they're Christians. So I'm going to show you three of the false doctrine that the Jehovah's witnesses believe about Jesus and why these teachings are unbiblical, I'll also show you their arguments and favorite proof texts so that you can defend the biblical truth if you ever speak to one. Number one, the Jehovah's Witnesses aren't Christians because they deny the deity of Jesus. They believe that Jesus is not God. Now they may say that Jesus was a God or a lower form of a God or a demigod, but they are very adamant that Jesus is not God and that he shouldn't be worshipped. They state, we do not worship Jesus as we do not believe that he is Almighty God. And they'll use the Bible to support this false claim. So here's a few verses that Jehovah's Witnesses will use to deny the deity of Jesus. And I'm going to show you how they're twisting these verses and taking them out of context. One is John 14, 28, where Jesus said, My Father is greater than I. The Jehovah's Witnesses will interpret these words to mean that the Father was God, but that Jesus was but when Jesus said that his father was greater than him, greater did not mean more important or more significant or a higher level of deity, but rather greater in role. Jesus and the father were still equal. And if Jesus really meant greater in the sense that the Jehovah's Witnesses interpret it, this would have contradicted his own words in John 10 30 when he said, I and my father are one. So if Jesus wasn't denying his own deity, then how could it be that his father was greater than him. Well, Philippians 2 helps to explain this. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Jesus was fully God. He was in the form of God and he was equal with God. And yet he came to earth as a man, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully man. He was not half God, half man. He was not a God who gave up deity while on earth. No, he was completely both at the same time. And this is what theologians refer to as a hypostatic union of Christ. So as a man, Jesus humbled himself and submitted to God's will on the cross. And in this sense, the Father was greater than the Son. He wasn't more important or a higher level of deity, but he was greater in the sense that Jesus had taken on human flesh and submitted to the Father's will. The word greater was about relationship and role, not about deity or equality. A similar Jehovah's Witness proof text is John 6 38. Jesus said, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. Jehovah's Witnesses will emphasize that Jesus did not come down from heaven to do his own will. In they argue that if Jesus was God, then he would not have been sent and that he would not be submitting to the Father's will. But this is not at all downplay Jesus' deity, because within the Trinity, each member has different roles, and part of Jesus' role was to submit to the Father's will. If Jesus was trying to say that he wasn't God, he would have just said that. So this verse does not disprove his deity. And another Bible verse that the Jehovah's Witnesses will wrongly use is John 1.8. 
16. Here, Jesus says, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. To the Jehovah's Witnesses, this verse seems pretty clear that Jesus isn't God, because nobody had seen God, but people had seen Jesus. So Jesus must not be God. But here's why that's a wrong belief. Because in the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all God. So when Jesus said that no man had seen God, it was a reference to the Father. He wasn't saying that no member of the Trinity had ever been seen, but rather that the Father hadn't been seen. One of the essentials of Christianity is the deity of Christ, but the Jehovah's Witnesses deny that. They say that he wasn't God, but Jesus claimed to be God. Now obviously, just claiming to be God doesn't mean that you are God, because any liar or lunatic could also say that they're God. But one of the lies that Jehovah's Witnesses believe is that Jesus never said that he was God, and yet he did many times. When Satan tempted Jesus, Jesus rebuked him by saying, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. In John 10.30, Jesus said, I and my Father are one, asserting both his deity and his equality with God. When people referred to Jesus as God and worshipped him, he never discouraged them. And in John 5.17, Jesus refers to God as his Father, which made him equal with God. He said, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Now to the average modern reader, this might not seem like a claim to deity, but in the religious context, this is what Jesus was stating, and that's also how people interpreted it. Because verse 18 says that the Jews sought to kill him because he said that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. And notice that this wasn't just the Jews' opinion of his statement. This was John's commentary of the event. So the Bible says that Jesus made himself equal with God. And Jesus repeats this truth a few verses later where he says that all men should honor the Son even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son honoreth not the Father which hath sent him. Jesus should be honored just as the Father is. And you can't honor God without honoring his Son. Jesus said that he was God. And this wasn't just something that he said, it was something that he backed up. He showed that he was God through his miracles. He gave sight to the blind, he made the lame walk, he fed the 5,000, he turned the water into wine, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Jesus was also worshipped. In John 9 38, after healing a blind man, the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. And in Hebrews 1 6, God commanded the angels to worship him, followed a couple of verses later by God the Father affirming Jesus as God. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. And then in John 1, we see Jesus presented as the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And later in the chapter, it becomes very clear that the Word is a reference to Jesus. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So from his own words, to his works, to his worship, the Bible is very clear that Jesus is God. The deity of Jesus is an essential, fundamental teaching of Christianity, and yet non-Christian groups like the Jehovah's Witnesses will deny this truth. Number two, the Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about Jesus because they believe that he didn't physically rise from the dead. Now they don't completely deny his resurrection because they do say that he rose spiritually, but they deny that he rose physically. But Jesus very clearly rose physically. He told the disciples, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones as ye see me have. Jesus made it very plain that he was not just a spirit. And as further proof, he showed them his hands and his feet. And he ate the fish and the honeycomb that they gave to him. So why do the Jehovah's Witnesses believe in just a spiritual resurrection? instead of a physical resurrection. Well, the argument is that since Jesus gave his life for the world, then taking his life back would be canceling that sacrifice. And to some, this may sound like a convincing argument, but it's just not true. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say that Jesus' resurrection would cancel his death or his payment for sin. In fact, the resurrection of Christ was necessary to prove his power over sin. And Jesus prophesied that he would rise in passages like John 10, 17-19, 
17 and 18, and Matthew 16, 21. So to not resurrect would be to not keep his word. So if you ever come across a Jehovah's Witness who denies the physical resurrection of Jesus, here's some of the verses that they'll use so that you'll be ready to defend the truth. 1 Peter 3, 18 says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Now in the New World Translation, which is the perverted version of the Bible that the Jehovah's Witnesses use, it's translated as in the Spirit, not by the Spirit. Now the NWT is not the only Bible version that translates it this way, and it's not necessarily a bad translation of this particular phrase, but this alternate wording is key to their false doctrine, and it leads them to believe that he only resurrected spiritually, not physically. But even if your translation says in the spirit, then interpreting it as in the power of the spirit or by the spirit is still correct. And this agrees with Romans 8:11, which says that the Holy Spirit raised up Jesus from the dead. Another verse that Jehovah's Witnesses will use is 1 Corinthians 15:45. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Now the last Adam here is a reference to Jesus, and the Jehovah's Witnesses will use 1 Corinthians 15:45 to say that since Jesus was made a quickening spirit, then he was only spiritual, not physical. But the problem is that this is an inconsistent way to interpret the Bible, because if you interpret this verse to mean that Jesus wasn't a physical being, then you also have to interpret it to mean that Adam wasn't physical either. If this verse means that Jesus was only a spirit, then it should also mean that Adam was only a soul. And this verse never says that Jesus wasn't in physical form. So it's really a stretch to use this verse to deny Jesus' physical resurrection. And then another verse that they'll use to deny the physical resurrection is 2 Corinthians 5.16. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. The Jehovah's Witnesses will take this to mean that Christ was in the flesh before he died, but not anymore after the resurrection. But again, this is an inconsistent way to interpret the verse. You have to twist it to make it mean what you think it's supposed to mean. Because the first half of the verse says, wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. So if this verse means that Christ wasn't a physical being after the resurrection, then it should also mean that everybody else in the world isn't a physical being either. What this verse really means is that you know Christ in a different way after you've been saved, because before you knew of him in the flesh or in your lost condition, but now you don't know him like that anymore. And this goes along with the first half of the verse too, because once you've been saved and given new life, you start to know everybody differently. This goes back to how Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount to not just love your neighbors but hate your enemies, but rather to love both. And now 2 Corinthians 5.16 is referencing this change in our view of people. Because we're saved, we don't know people after the flesh anymore. So this verse doesn't mean that Jesus didn't resurrect physically. It means that because we're saved and we've accepted him as our savior, then now we see him in a new light. The Jehovah's Witnesses say that the resurrection is a key to their faith, but they teach that he did not physically rise, only spiritually, and that when Jesus made his post-resurrection appearances, he was just a spiritual being taking on human form. But the Bible shows this idea to be a heresy. And then number three, the Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about Jesus because they believe that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. They say Michael is none other than Jesus Christ in his heavenly role, and that the Bible suggests that Jesus himself is the Archangel Michael. One of the reasons why they believe this is because of 1 Thessalonians 4.16, which says, So the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the Archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So when the rapture happens, the Bible says that Jesus will shout with the voice of the Archangel, and Jehovah's Witnesses will interpret this to mean that Jesus is the Archangel, and that since Michael is the only Archangel, as Jude 9 seems to imply, then Jesus must be Michael. But the Bible doesn't say that Jesus is the Archangel, it says that he'll descend 
then with the voice of the archangel, meaning that his voice will be like that voice, but not that voice. Similarly, Revelation 1.10 says that God spoke with a voice like a trumpet. Now obviously, this does not mean that God's voice was a trumpet, but rather that his voice was like a trumpet. So I believe that 1 Thessalonians 4.16 means that when Jesus descends, his voice will be like the archangel's voice. Now another possible interpretation of this verse is that when Jesus descends, then Michael's voice will shout and announce Jesus coming, and that the archangel's voice will accompany the Lord's descent. And this could be a fulfillment of the prophecy in Daniel 12.1, where it says that Michael will arise one day and there'd be a time of trouble. Now this is not the interpretation that I hold to, because to me, a plain reading of the text doesn't seem to imply that. But either way, Jesus is not the archangel, and the verse very clearly does not say that. The Jehovah's Witnesses are wrong about Jesus being Michael the Archangel because the Bible never refers to Jesus as an angel, and Hebrews 1 clearly distinguishes Jesus from the angels. Hebrews 1.5 says, For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee, and again I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. This is a rhetorical question, and the obvious answer is none of them. God refers to none of the angels as his son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. God never commands for the angels to be worshipped, but it is commanded that the angels worship Christ. So Hebrews 1 discusses the angels, and then it switches to talking about the son, because verse 8 starts with the phrase, but unto the son he saith. So it's clear that Jesus is not among these angels, so he can't be Michael the Archangel. Another clear evidence why Jesus is not Michael is because in Jude 9, the Bible says, Yet Michael the Archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. Michael the Archangel did not rebuke or accuse the devil, but rather he let God rebuke him instead. And this is a contrast to the temptation of Jesus in Matthew 4, where he did accuse the devil. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now the Jehovah's Witnesses will argue that Jesus and Michael are the same being because they'll take similarities between the two and they'll use those to prove that they must be the same. Because in Revelation 12, 7, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels, which makes Michael a leader of angels. And then in Revelation 19, Jesus is also seen as a leader of angels. So the Bible talks about Jesus and his angels, and also about Michael and his angels, and they'll use these similarities between the two to argue that they're the same. But this is really bad logic. And if we apply this same type of logic, we could also argue that LeBron James and Michael Jordan are the same person. They both play basketball, they both wore number 23, they were both MVPs, they both won champions, and they're both viewed by many as the greatest of all time. So they must be the same person, right? Well, obviously not. And this is the same type of argument that the Jehovah's Witnesses are making when they say that Jesus is Michael the Archangel. This is really bad logic, and it's just not true. The Bible never says that Jesus is Michael the Archangel, and the Jehovah's Witnesses might find a few verses where you could maybe try to figure out a way to make it seem like Jesus is Michael, but it's a very strange strange thing to believe when the Bible never says that. And the Bible makes it very clear that Jesus is not Michael the Archangel. Now I'm not making this video just to hate on the Jehovah's Witnesses, because I'm sure that a lot of them are nice people who believe that they're right and biblical. But my goal is to teach the Bible and to show why false teachings are unbiblical, and that's why I'm making this video, because a lot of well-meaning people are falling for these lies and heresies of the Jehovah's Witnesses and I'm trying to correct that. Now, another essential Christian belief that the Jehovah's Witnesses deny is the Trinity. So if you want a quick and simple explanation of what the Trinity is and isn't, then watch this video. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more biblical teaching like this.